Today is the day. The gayest Marvel show ever comes out. That would be Agatha all along. This follows up sister Disney company, Lucasfilm, who had the gayest Star Wars show ever, The Acolyte. How'd that work out for them? So, some reviews have leaked. Um, in fact, I'm going to read a few of them here. Now, these are not showing up on Rotten Tomatoes yet. According to Rotten Tomatoes, there are no critics reviews yet. But said critics have released their reviews over, over on X, formerly Twitter. And, uh, gotta say, you know, these are the same people that refuse to review Am I Racist? So, I'm just gonna say it. If you're a critic, and you haven't reviewed Am I Racist? Because it doesn't fit your politics, but you reviewed Agatha all along because it fits your politics? Um, you've lost all credibility. I'm just going to put it out there. You can agree with me. You can disagree with me in the comment section down below, but I'm just going to put it out there. I mean, Marvel is following the same playbook as Lucasfilm with the promotion of this show. Who's the audience for this show? Well, the audience is a very, very, very small one. We're talking about the LGBTQ community. We're talking about single females. This show is not meant for people that follow comics. In fact, this show deviates from the comic completely. Now, granted, it's been a long time since I've seen a, seen a comic with Agatha Harkness in it. But this show, this show should be not a Marvel show. It should be a Disney show, quite honestly. Now, for those of you that might be tuning into this show tonight as it premieres for the first time, you're going to have to go back and watch WandaVision before you watch Agatha Harkness. Because the two are tied together. So you have a little bit of homework to do to catch up with, with what's going on with Agatha all along. So here we go. From the Daily Mail, Disney Plus fans go wild for best Marvel TV show ever produced. So it's better than Daredevil? Really? I mean, those of, watch, of us that watch Daredevil on Netflix? No. Daredevil was dark. It was gritty. It, it stayed true to the source material. No. Now, me, I was also a fan of Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, The Punisher, all on Netflix. I thought all the Netflix Marvel shows were awesome. This, this isn't going to be anywhere near being the best Marvel TV show ever produced. Branding the first four episodes perfect as rave reviews roll in. Now they're saying this is fan reviews. These aren't fan reviews. These are critic reviews. Critics all across the country were given the first four episodes of the nine episode season, which debuts on Disney plus September 18th tonight with the first two episodes, then weekly episodes up until October the 30th, just before Halloween. An uh, overwhelming, overwhelming majority of critics who released the reactions on X formerly Twitter on Monday evening were quite positive. And again, this is this show. is a continuation from WandaVision. It takes place after WandaVision. So if you want to get up to speed, you got to go watch WandaVision. Vision? Vision. 
Sin Geek News. Ryan said, hashtag Agatha all along is a crazy, wicked, fun, mystery filled journey that also has some actually terrifying scares. Oh, wasn't too excited, but became a total fan after watching. Compared to other Disney Plus shows, it actually feels like TV in both writing and pacing. Can't wait for more. Okay. Movie podcast, Daniel Baptista. Hashtag Agatha All Along is the perfect show for the spooky season and filled with big witch energy. Catherine Hahn is iconic as ever and delivers a deliciously devious and spellbinding performance. Joe Locke is a scene stealer. This is the most fun you'll have feasting on a show this year. Remember, Joe Locke is the one that said was one of the ones promoting the show about how this is the gayest Marvel show ever. I'm paraphrasing there. Freelance writer Sophia Soto said, if there was ever a character that deserved her own spinoff series, it's Hagatha Harkness. Catherine Hunt is better than ever, thriving as she takes center stage. As for Joe Locke, he's a total scene stealer and will no doubt become a new fan favorite. Boom Smack Pals Michael Patterson said, Agatha all along is absolutely batshit crazy in all the right kinds of ways. Catherine Hahn is a force camping it up as Agatha Harkness like we all knew she would. The rest of the cast is also divine and Joe Locke is a gem. Vivid, outlandish, and brilliant. Screen Rants, Caitlin Terrell said, The magic is back in the hashtag MCU with hashtag Agatha all along. Catherine Hahn and Aubrey Plaza are phenomenal. Joe Locke is adorable. The mystery and witchy visuals are stunning, completely drawing you in. This is the perfect way to kick off the spooky season. Let's skip down here to IGN's Amelia Emberwing. I had a lot of concerns heading into hashtag Agatha all along, but I'm thrilled to report that this witch has quite enjoyed what she's seen so far. I'm having a ton of fun theorizing already, and I really hope it sticks the landing. I wonder what IGN gave it as a score. So there you have a sampling of the critics and what they're saying. Now let's go over to Rotten Tomatoes. In fact, uh, Cosmic Book News, Matt McGloin put out an article talking about the Rotten Tomatoes score for Agatha. Uh, at the time of the article, it was at 71%. Right now it's sitting at 74% over on the popcorn meter. And he says the series shares a similar company with Echo, 61%, Secret Invasion, 44%, and She-Hulk, 32%. Curiously, there's no Rotten Tomatoes score, which suggests Agatha hasn't been reviewed by many critics. Well, that's funny because the critics posted all the reviews over to X. They're not up on Rotten Tomatoes yet. The possibility suggests critics didn't bother reviewing the series because it's not worth their time. Well, that could be said of, uh, am I racist? Currently in theaters. As they aren't getting enough clicks on articles. This also suggests that, like previous MCU shows on Disney+, Plus, Agatha may suffer from poor viewership ratings. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. If history serves, and we learn from history... The marketing campaign for the Acolyte as the gayest Star Wars. And the marketing campaign for Agatha all along as the gayest Marvel show. One could surmise that. Yeah, this isn't going to get very good viewership. I mean, look at previous Marvel shows. That weren't called the gayest Marvel show ever. She-Hulk. Bad. Secret Wars, bad. Echo, bad. None of these shows got very good viewership. So if, I could be pleasantly surprised. I could be pleasantly shocked. Agatha may do well, but I don't think so. Worth a mention is that Agatha seems to be part of a previous regime at Marvel TV responsible for the MCU failing on the streaming service, which is in part led to a $4 billion loss for Disney. 
Following the massive failure of Secret Invasion, Kevin Feige has retooled its Marvel television division, as we first said. That includes Daredevil Born Again. As for some reason, just prior to today's premiere of the show, the actors and all the trades glorified how gay Agatha is. And it's said that Marvel's gayest show ever. As fans on social media have noted, who cares? That's right. Who cares? Fans just want to know what the show is about and if it's any good. Exactly. We want to know what the show's about. What, what's the story? Does it have a good story? Does it have good character development? Is it written well? Is it acted well? Does it follow the source material? Those are things fans are interested in. Not the sexuality of the characters. Not the message. Fans are tired of all the lecturing. It hasn't been successful. And again, has led to losses of billions and billions of dollars. It's the same formula that's lost them money. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Reportedly, there's even a line Catherine Hahn says in the show that is rather questionable, especially for Marvel and Disney+. Plus. Oddly, a website is even running with it that these are things Marvel fans live for. I think it's safe to say that's nowhere near the case. Yeah, it's not. So let's take a look at a few of the audience critiques that are on Rotten Tomatoes right now. First one out of the gate, half star. Who thought this was a good idea? Do the producers have some dirt on Bob Iger? Otherwise, I don't understand how he could green light a show about a character no one cares about. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Next one's a five-star review. You can already tell this will be a fun show. Okay, great. Half-star review. Okay, so I wouldn't have chosen to watch this, but I lost a bet. Way worse than I imagined. Dialogue is pure cringe, and the acting is below community theater level. This show is for boomer white females who drink box wine and dudes with no upper body strength that wear Crocs unironically. Just when you think D plus can't sink any lower, they outdo themselves again. Uh, next one, half star. It's a copy of WandaVision, which only copied the format of iconic series. There's nothing new about it, and the plot is too slow. Next one, half star. I really know now. I didn't need this bad effects AI that those gotcha hippity hippity stuff. Let's see what they will do, but bet it's going to burn more, to, more into the ground as it deserves. It was a waste of my time fully, but you have to watch this to have a meaning. Gotta say, love. love. Hey, Maui, work on your grammatical errors there. <laughs> that was hard to read. Uh, one star, terrible, just terrible, terrible. Five stars, it's so good, can't wait to see the next episode. Another five star, absolutely love this show so far. Perfect for Halloween and it is a celebration of all things witches. Loving the whole cast and the WandaVision like mystery that it's set up. The chemistry between Catherine Hahn and Aubrey Plaza is insane and Joe Locke is definitely a standout. Great series, great sequel, loved it. It's not really a sequel, but okay. Um, there was one in here that caught my eyes. I was going through these. Got to scroll through here and find it. Cause somebody had posted and I'm missing it. Um, There it is. This half star review here. No redeeming qualities. Horribly written and acted. If you can call that acting. I see Rotten Tomatoes is deleting negative reviews. Very telling. Well, I wouldn't put it past Rotten Tomatoes. They've been known to do things with their algorithm. To boost, to boost shows. So there's just a sampling. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Comment down below. You going to watch Agatha all along? I mean, 
I might just check it out to see how bad it is and make fun of it so I can make more content, to be honest with you. But let me hear what you guys have to think. So before you leave, leave a comment. Smash that like button. Hit that thumbs up. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So, it, so my channel get, so YouTube knows that, hey, I'm getting some, I'm getting some uh, views. I'm getting some, some interaction. Um, and if you're new here and you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And with that, thanks for tuning in. And I will see you guys later.